To my dear son Andrew, so much has changed in my life since I lost you that I barely know who I am any longer. I miss you more deeply than I can express. And I wish I was sharing your 15th birthday with you. The Gosden family lives in Balby, a part of Doncaster in South Yorkshire. Andrew Gosden's parents are Christians, but they didn't baptize their kids to let them choose their beliefs. Andrew, also called Rue, hadn't been to church for a year and a half before he disappeared. He used to be a Cub Scout, but stopped a few months before he went missing. Andrew was a homebody, usually staying home and always letting his family know where he was going. Andrew Gosden was a smart student at the Macaulay Catholic High School. He always attended school and was part of a program for top performing students. People thought he'd get straight A's in his exams and go to Cambridge. Even though he was good at math, he didn't talk much about school to his parents. In the summer of 2006, he went to a special school program at Lancaster University and came back excited about it. Andrew was okay being alone, but had a small group of friends. He didn't hang out with them outside of school. His family said he seemed happy, not lonely, and there was no sign of him being sad or bullied. Andrew Gosden's dad described him as forgetful, not savvy about the streets, and possibly at risk. He was a quiet and mature kid, not easily upset. Even though he was 14, he looked younger, maybe around 12, and he was small for his age. Andrew wore thick glasses, was deaf in one ear, and had a unique double ridge on his right ear. His plan was to dye his light brown hair black. Andrew had a couple of phones but rarely used them and often lost them. He got a new phone for his 12th birthday, but he didn't use it much and didn't want a replacement when he lost it before disappearing. Instead, he wanted a new Xbox when his parents offered to replace the lost phones. He liked video games and metal bands. You would normally find Andrew at some point every night or every day like this with his Xbox thing that I can't work getting click, 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 click <laughs> on the Xbox. Uh, this is a very normal posture for him. The last time he was seen, he wore a black slipknot t-shirt, black jeans, trainers, a watch on his left wrist, and carried a black canvas satchel with patches of rock and metal bands on it. During the summer break in 2007, which is usually between July and September, Andrew Gosden's parents suggested that he visit his grandmother in London. However, he decided not to go. When he disappeared, he had been back at school for eight days. In the days before he went missing, Andrew changed his usual routine. He chose to walk home from school instead of taking the bus, a route that would take about one hour and 20 minutes for the four mile distance. On the evening before he disappeared, things seemed normal at home. The family had dinner together, washed the dishes, and Andrew spent time doing a jigsaw puzzle with his dad. Later, he watched some comedy shows on TV with his mom, including Mock the Week and That Mitchell and Webb Look. On the day Andrew disappeared, he had trouble waking up and was grumpy which his mom found unusual because he usually woke up on time. At 8.05 a.m. he left his house and was seen by a family friend walking through a park to his usual bus stop. Instead of taking the bus to school, he went to a nearby cash machine at a garage, withdrew $200, almost all of his money, and was caught on a neighbor's camera going back home. Back at home, Andrew put his school uniform in the washing machine, changed into casual clothes, a black slipknot t-shirt and black jeans, and packed a bag with patches of rock and metal bands. He took his wallet, keys, and a PlayStation portable console, but left other things like his passport, a coat, and the charger for his console. He also left around $100 in cash he had saved from birthdays. At 8.30 a.m., Andrew left his house and was recorded on a neighbor's CCTV, walking down Littlemore Lane towards Westfield Park. From there, he walked to Doncaster Railway Station, and bought a one-way ticket to London for $31.40. The ticket seller offered a slightly more expensive return ticket, but Andrew insisted on getting a single ticket. At 9.35 a.m., he was spotted boarding the train to King's Cross Station by himself. A woman who sat next to him said he was quiet and focused on playing a video game. When Andrew didn't show up for his morning classes, the school tried calling his parents but left a message on the wrong person's phone. Andrew reached King's Cross Station at 11.20 a.m. and was seen leaving the main entrance at 11.25 a.m. on CCTV. This is the last confirmed sighting of him. 
Why has Andrew travelled to London? Officers trawl through hours of CCTV footage at King's Cross. They eventually find what they're looking for. Andrew is filmed leaving the station at 11.25 on Friday the 14th of September, the morning he went missing. From here, he simply disappears onto the streets of London. Where is he going? What does he have planned? To find Andrew in a city of 7 million people is not going to be easy, and the police know it. South Yorkshire police officers have travelled down to London several times, liaising with local police down there, British Transport Police, checking various council CCTV systems, speaking to as many people as possible, really. There's been a, a big you know, media campaign. Obviously, Andrew's parents have been heavily involved and we've been liaising closely with them as well. Andrew's mum and dad are doing everything they can to make sure their son is not forgotten. That evening, the Gosden family and a friend had dinner assuming Andrew was either playing video games in the converted cellar or doing homework in his room. When they discovered he wasn't home, they first thought he might be with a friend or neighbor, just losing track of time. After calling his friends and finding out he wasn't there and hadn't been to school, they called the police around 7 p.m. Charlotte, Andrew's sister, mentioned the panic, thinking something might have happened on the way to school. When they realized he hadn't even tried to go to school, it became even more worrying. Charlotte and Andrew's dad, Kevin, checked Andrew's route to school in nearby areas but found nothing. Within three hours of realizing Andrew was missing, they made a missing person leaflet. Family and friends searched the area until nightfall, and over the weekend the police searched nearby bushes but found nothing. Three days later, after talking to the woman who sold Andrew his train ticket, the police confirmed he had traveled to London. Andrew had refused a return ticket, which didn't seem strange to his father, as Andrew knew people in London to stay with. Initial searches in London focused on areas with relatives of the Gosden family, like Chislehurst and Sidcup. Days after the disappearance, the family went to London, handing out flyers and posters in places Andrew might be interested in, especially museums and exhibitions. Every day his mother is out searching for him, putting up posters and hoping for sightings. He's one of 30,000 people who are reported missing in London every year, as Tom Edwards reports. Could you have seen this boy in this area? Do you come here regularly? Is it possible you've seen this boy? Could you possibly have seen this boy at all in this vicinity? In the crowds around South Kensington, a mother is looking for her son. She's been searching for 10 days. It really has been quite devastating because it's such a shock and we just haven't got a blueprint for how to handle this kind of situation, really. Sometimes putting in 15-hour days, just walking, chatting to general public, um, staff in the museums or any places where I know he's likely to have been that he enjoys coming to. South Yorkshire Police asked British Transport Police to check CCTV footage two days after Andrew went missing, but they couldn't spot him in the crowds. Three weeks later, they reviewed CCTV footage at King's Cross and identified Andrew. The image of him leaving King's Cross was shared in the media, along with a close-up of his distinctive right ear with a double ridge. The family and the police explored the idea that Andrew might have gone to London to meet someone from the internet, but there was no evidence for this. Andrew didn't use a computer at home, had no email address, and hadn't set up online accounts on his Xbox or PSP. Police checked computers at Andrew's school and the library but found no activity. A unique serial number from Andrew's PSP was sent to Sony HQ, confirming no online activity. The investigation considered possible reasons for Andrew's trip to London, such as visiting sites or looking for work experience. The family looked into events like the YouTube gathering and music concerts in London, including 30 Seconds to Mars and Sixth, but there's no evidence Andrew attended. Finnish band, Tim's promotional signing was also investigated, but didn't lead to meaningful information. Andrew's dad speculated on the reason for his disappearance, considering if Andrew wanted to reinvent himself or if something troubled him. In his heart, he thought it might have been a spur-of-the-moment decision. 
Andrew Gosden went missing in 2007, and his family criticized the police for focusing on them initially. The family was cleared of any involvement. Despite 122 reported sightings, none were verified. In 2017, police made a fresh appeal, indicating the belief that Andrew might still be alive. In 2018, an online conversation under the name Andy Rue raised suspicions, but led to no identification. In 2021, two men were arrested, but they were later released without charge in 2023. Andrew's family maintains his room as he left it, and his bank account hasn't been used since his disappearance. No clues as to why he left, if he meant to come back, or if he's even still alive. You're just in a limbo the whole time. You know, I, would, I mean, I would prefer to have a bag of bones that could be identified by DNA or something and, and, and know that because then, you know, you would have some closure to it, um, however painful. It would be easier to know that he was dead than the ongoing yes, uncertainty. Yes, than, than just knowing nothing. In photo albums, Andrew is forever young. But age progression images show what he might look like now, and the rare distinctive double ridge on his right ear could still lead to him being recognised. His family will always hold on to hope.